Hello again, World History 2 students. Mr. Deegan here with another edition of VidNotes videos. Today we're going to tackle lesson four, Eastern Civilizations Part 1. Please get out your VidNotes packet, the Unit 3 edition. And when we talk about Eastern Civilizations, we need to understand why we call them East. Well, Eastern civilizations refers to those civilizations in the Eastern Hemisphere that we might not talk about as much. We're going to be talking about the Ottoman Empire and the Mughal Empire today. And in our second part, we'll talk about China, Japan, and an empire in Africa that gained strength. The big question we'll deal with today, how did Eastern civilizations respond to European trade? And as you see, the Ottoman Empire of the Middle East and the Mughal Empire of India are the two empires we will be talking about. Before we talk about the East, it's important to point out how the East and West connected with each other. It wasn't Columbus that started the trade routes in 1492. There were trade routes in place that linked Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and Europe for centuries. So it's 1500. We're now going to show you the different routes in place. And the most important of those routes was the Silk Road trade route. Where was the Silk Road trade route? Well, it started in eastern China, and the red line is the route, and it winds its way in Central Asia all the way to the Middle East. You see Baghdad, a city in Iraq, and it eventually hits the Mediterranean Sea. And the Mediterranean Sea connects merchants to Africa. You see the Egyptian city of Alexandria and to southern European cities, including that major city, Rome, in Italy. What's the significance of the Silk Road trade route? Well, since 100 BC, before the birth of Christ, this route connected many civilizations' economies along its path. Another trade route was the maritime or sea trade routes across the Indian Ocean. Here's India, here's the vast ocean that surrounds it, and this route also connected the Indian Ocean to the South China Sea. What's the significance? Well, India, Africa, China, and also Greece. The Greek civilization traded goods and ideas. Another important trade route was the Trans-Saharan trade routes. Trans meaning across. Where was this route? Across North Africa. You see it in tan here. When was this trade route widely used? From 700 to 1500. And what was the significance of the Trans-Saharan route? Well, it linked Africa to Europe in the north and to India in the east. This trade route also introduced the religion of Islam to non-Muslim societies in Africa. And what were the important trade elements? Gold, salt, and slaves were all traded along this route. And you see how it's an important connector from North Africa to the West and the Atlantic trade and the East and the Indian Ocean trade. Another trade route was the Northern European trade routes using the Black Sea. Here's the Black Sea, one of the biggest bodies of water in Europe. And you see how it links the Middle East and Eastern Europe to Northern Europe and Western Europe. And here is one of the routes you might take to get to Northern Europe from the Black Sea. Western Europe also had a sea and river route, many routes, I might add, because there were so many rivers that linked 
west to the east. And here is Western Europe in green, countries that make it up. The South China Sea trade routes, where is it? Well, it's in Southeast Asia. And this map shows you some countries in Southeast Asia. The Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Myanmar, also called Burma, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei. And the South China Sea trade routes links all of these different Asian societies. China is to the north here. And it also linked these Asian societies to India. As you see, the Indian Ocean is in the left-hand corner. Okay, why were these trade routes so important? Well, scientific ideas and new technology were exchanged among the different cultures along these trade routes. And the East provided the West with all of these new ideas. We should give the East more credit because Europe borrowed a lot of things from Eastern civilizations. Let's look at some of those things. China gave the West paper, the compass, silk, and you see a beautiful white silk dress, and the worms from which silk comes, silkworms. China also gave the West porcelain. India and the Middle East gave the West textiles and a numeral system. We can say also that all Eastern cultures gave the West ideas about medicine, astronomy, and math. The first numeral systems were not invented by Europe or Western cultures, but rather by Eastern cultures. You see the Arabic Indic number system. And with all of this said, we might ask ourselves, what area of the world is more civilized? Is it the West? And we would often say yes. Or is it the East, who might be the underdog in this question? But based on all of this information, the East contributes a lot. Rounding that corner and almost done with lesson four of unit three. First, please pause and answer those summary questions. Until that lesson, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.